Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. Anthony Hill. And you are watching Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions, and we welcome you here today, and we hope and we pray that today will be an enlightening day for you, uh, a moment where things can change in the way maybe that you see something. That's the whole point of these discussions. I want to start off by asking some questions here. Are you a leader or are you a follower? Something that is very important. Most people, I find, are followers. Mm -hmm. But you need to be a leader. You were bred to be a leader. And it's only those that are leaders that Yahweh is really, really going to elevate in this faith. Can you tell when correct doctrine from false doctrine? That is another difficult one for most people because they're not well-schooled in Scripture. How do you respond to correct doctrine when it is presented to you? And I find, unfortunately, most people um, reject it. They shun it. That was what we did in the last episode. They push away and they deflect the commandments of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes a problem because it, it definitely tells you where the person's at. And they need a renewing of the mind. They need to understand correct doctrine from the New Testament. And that's our goal today is to try to help people understand why would you want to heap up a teacher for bad doctrine, mm -hmm. you know? And we're going to cover that today. We're going to get into some of the nuts and bolts of that. So you want to go ahead and open with open comments? Well, praise, praise Yahweh this morning. Um, for me, when, when I saw this subject that you picked, the heaping up teachers for bad doctrine, uh, I, I, I pictured myself when I first began because I came in, you know, what we would call strict, strict doctrine, strict. And then I would look over at the other teachers and see they was not so strict. And it it would kind of push me to gravitate to somebody that wasn't so pushy and um, like binding you up and down that you can't do this and you can't do that, you can't touch this and <clears throat> you can't wear this. And though it might have been the perfect discipline and humility road I needed to be on the flesh wanted didn't want that pain and so I was looking at with me on my journey I was trying to heap something up that was more comfortable for me not what I needed but what I wanted you know and I find that Yahweh gives you the teaching which is the way you should live that's what you need it's not what you want but it's what you need and so when i see you uh, the question there are you heaping up teachers for your uh selfish need are you heaping the ones to you that's going to teach you the right way and give you what you actually need and not want yeah uh i remember when i first was called to the faith some 40 years ago mm -hmm. The moment that I heard it, I knew it was true. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people who are supposedly in the faith will tell you that's their experience as well. Mm -hmm. But what I want to make the distinction is, is that um, I was told that the Sabbath is the correct day of worship. Mm -hmm. And that was not something that I understood because I was brought up as a Catholic. But... The moment it was said, it's like I kind of always knew it, but I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I later come to realize that the inner man knew it, but the carnal mind that was operating all the, that life didn't understand that and mm -hmm. didn't want to accept that. Mm -hmm. it, it's a really strange state of mind to be. But most people, I find that, because... The question was, when it's the truth is presented to you, how do you deal with that? How mm -hmm. do you respond? Mm -hmm. Well, I responded that way. But a lot of people who claim to be in the faith, I'm going to say Christians because that's normally who I come across, when I tell them about the Sabbath, oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So they're not responding in a very pro proactive kind of way, which tells me that if you are an unbeliever, then I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you claim to believe in Jesus, 
Jesus kept the Sabbath. The apostles kept the Sabbath. They preached the Sabbath. We got it all through the New Testament. It never changed. Mm -hmm. He was never resurrected on Sunday. It was resurrected on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So it points right back to the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So when you reject that as someone who claims to believe in the Messiah, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So that mean, that tells me you've heaped up teachers for yourself mm -hmm. that are giving you bad doctrine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into this a little bit more in depth today. And so point number one is going to be the terminal mental and spiritual condition mm -hmm. based on this. The terminal mental and spiritual condition. So in this one, I'm, I kind of took the lead on this because it kind of pricked me uh, to do this particular subject. So I picked, instead of you, I picked uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. And what I got out of it was the seductive and alluring spirit of mythological fiction. Because mm -hmm. this is the world that I live in, that I experience from people around the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are caught up in Lorian Kabbalah brought into the faith of mm -hmm. Messiah. Mm -hmm. They're they're heavy into Enoch and Jasher and all these mythological books written by secular not secular religious Jews but through Talmudic Judaism and Lorian Kabbalah and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And what they don't realize is they are the best proselytes of Judaism. These people who claim to believe in Yeshua are the best proselytes of Talmudic Judaism and Lorian Judaism because they're promoting these books to the Gentiles mm -hmm. and they're teaching those doctrines. These are just mythological books, just like the Greeks make mythology, but it's only in Judaism. So that's where they're getting. You're just trading one mythology for another. So this is what I come to experience with a lot of people and that's what they're dwelling on and then i said to myself how in the world does reading that okay the watchers and the fallen angels who had sex with the daughters of men and i covered all that in a three-part series in the genesis series how does that preparing you and your character for the times that are coming ahead I don't see any way in the world you're ever going to be prepared for the trials of life that are coming, which we're shouting out to people. This thing is coming, man. It's like a freight train. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared? Are you looking inside yourself? Are you examining all this? Because all this stuff about Enoch and Jasher and Lorian Kabbalah and all this other stuff ain't going to mean nothing to you when this beast guy comes on the scene. But this is what people want. Yes. They want, they got itchy ears. Mm -hmm. They don't want to challenge themselves. They just want to go on life the way it's been going. So let's look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 4, starting at verse 2. Preach that proclaims as a public crier the word from the divine expression of Messiah. Be ready in season when there is an opportunity and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching and that's what we try to do mm -hmm. we're not here to condemn anybody we understand where people are at but we're saying it's time to come out of the babylonian system mm -hmm. someday it's got to happen you might as well start now because it takes time to make changes in your life and there's not a lot of time left verse three for the time will come when they will not endure by putting up with sound uncorrupt doctrine but according to their own desires a longing for what is forbidden kabbalah enoch jasher you know all these these mm -hmm. other books that are written by these secular people okay uh, longing for what is forbidden because they have itching a tickling of the ears mm -hmm. that they will heap up for themselves teachers mm -hmm. and that's where we are mm-hmm that's exactly where we are right now. People don't want to hear what we're talking about. They want to he rather listen to this other stuff. And it's absolutely amazing. Verse 4. And they will turn and re pervert, their ear pervert their ears from the truth that is not concealed to us and be turned with deflection to go aside to fables, which is mythological fiction. Bingo. There you go. Mm-hmm. There it is. There's a mythological fiction. Mm -hmm. And this is, as I just illustrated, this is where the people are today. The lost sheep of the house of Israel 
who are not supposed to be lost, claiming to believe in Yeshua, are following after mythological fiction. Superheroes. Superheroes. <laughs> that defeat the enemies and perform all of these miracles, and Yeshua is left to the side. And Yeshua is left to the side. Mm -hmm. So you picked 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and what I got out of this is replicating the original master plan to supplant the Most High. Mm -hmm. replicating the original master plan to supplant the Most High. So in verse 1, it says, But there were also false prophets, a religious imposter among the people, even as there be false pro uh, teachers, a propagator of false doctrine against the sect of the Nazarenes among you. That's what we are. We're the sect of the Nazarenes, mm -hmm. the sect of the way, okay, who will secretly bring in, without anyone noticing, destructive physical spiritual and eternal doctrines that bring ruin from heresies that cause disunion mm -hmm. even denying the master who is Joshua mm -hmm. who is an absolute ruler who brought them and bring on as an act, criminal act themselves with swift destruction mm -hmm. there's an awful lot going on there yes and many will follow by yielding to imitate their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed with defamed evil speaking and boy i hear that by covetousness and greedy extortion they will exploit as a peddler of merchandise you with deceptive words man we read comments and stuff how people just twist what we're saying in these videos mm-hmm it had no bearing whatsoever in the real reality of what we actually said or implied. They fighting. They fighting. They fight. They fighting a, a losing war is what they're mm -hmm. fighting, and their destruction does not slumber. For if Elohim did not spare to treat with leniency the angels who sinned by missing the mark and not sharing the prize, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, the deepest abyss to be reserved to prevent from escaping a fortress as prophesied for judgment as a tribunal based on divine Torah law. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> hey, I, that, that, that right there just, you know, they teach that you can't sin no more, mm -hmm. right? But right there, Peter is teaching, if he didn't spare the ones that sin, how you think you can get away with it? <laughs> because... But, because you got Jesus mm -hmm. and the demons don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> the angels don't even have Yahweh up there to protect them after they sinned. No. He punished them. Right. But you die here, you got everything to protect uh -huh. you, and you can continue to sin. Right. And that's a person that's to me is saying, I just want that person that's going to tell me I can do what I want to do. Exactly. I don't want to hear the one to tell me I can't do it. Men all want a wife just mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. You can go out and do whatever you want. Your underwear will be clean when you come home and folded nicely in the drawer, and I'll have a good meal for you on the table. Mm -hmm. Just go as long as you want to do what you want to do in the streets. And we, we, I see people, they've left the faith. Yeah. But they needed somebody to come and tell them it was okay to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, mm -hmm. you, you talked about Jerusalem being judged in the Babylon and how many of them over there in the faith that teaches Yeshua hadn't even came mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. with no evidence that he hasn't came but they tell you he hasn't came yet and how many people follow them how many people that are just following that doctrine they, I just want the one to tell me I ain't got to hear Yeshua I don't have to hear that he loved me because I want to I wanna be able to hear that I can do certain things and be this certain person, and I'm fine. But they're prospering out there. They're moving along. So what is it in the physical that they think they're going to see that's not right, written in that Bible that's telling them that's what's going to happen to you is going to happen? It might be delayed, but it's coming. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. 
Um, you said something. I don't recall what you said, but instantly I got this vision. Mm-hmm. Um, something about um, that you want you want this Messiah that covers your sins so you can continue on doing whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and you, it's okay with him. Mm-hmm. That you're covered by the blood. Mm-hmm. So in that moment when you kind of said something like that, I, I had this vision. I'm like, never thought about this before this is interesting because if i remember correctly the scriptures i think john said it he says behold the lamb of yahweh slain before the foundation of the world Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. if he was slain before the foundation of the world and his blood was shed way back then and the angels were there, how come that blood didn't cover those demons? And how come they didn't get uh, saved? Mm-hmm. And as it says here, for if Elohim did not spare to treat with leniency the angels mm-hmm. who sinned by missing the mark and not sharing the prize, but cast them into hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness, the deepest abyss to be reserved to prevent from escaping a fortress as provided, prophesied for judgment as a tribunal based on divine Torah law. Mm -hmm. So the very law that they rebelled against, how come the blood of Jesus back then, in their day, didn't save them? So then, how can you make the same argument? He's saying, I didn't spare them. So you're saying now, somehow, you're better than the angels, and you can be spared? That there's a double standard now? Un- un- unconsciously, I believe, I don't think they think it because they want to be in this uh, position anyway. They want to be able to do what I they want to do. I get that. Yeah. But as the title, as it said in the questionnaire, mm-hmm. you know, why are you heaping up these teachers that are teaching you this stuff? I know it's because what you just said. Mm-hmm. I understand that. Right. But you're suspending logic for a feeling on the heart. Mm-hmm. A momentary feeling. A momentary right. feeling on mm-hmm. the heart. Mm-hmm. Well, why can't we apply this in this scripture here to the angels? Mm-hmm. Maybe they had a momentary feeling in their heart. Oh, I'm going to break Yahweh's commandments. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sin. Uh, and I'll repent afterwards. And I, Come on, give me a break. And I'll still be with them. And I'll still be with them. I won't be reserved for the darkness and chains in the bottomless pit. Come on, man. And I won't be judged by the very law that I was rebellious against. Give me a freaking break. It, Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Really? That's your logic. And but he, this is what we hear. And they read this same stuff that it's going to be false teachers and false prophets. That's going to lead you away from believing the truth. Here, here's another one. Only a follower can bite into something like that. Mm-hmm. Only. I'm talking about teachers now. Mm-hmm. In reality, you're not a teacher. You're a follower. Because mm-hmm. somebody impregnated you with that corrupt doctrine to teach to the flock. Mm-hmm. You're the gatekeeper of the congregation. You're the filter who decides what the congregation gets to hear. But you bit into that thing. It's scary. That's why the scripture says, be careful if you want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be held to a greater account. You better be careful what you're teaching people. Because remember now, those demons who fell Mm -hmm. were once classified as sons of Elohim. Mm Mm-hmm. Not the ones that came into the daughter of men. Mm-hmm. They were classified as sons of Elohim because they were a builder of the family name of Yahweh mm-hmm. because they were righteous and walking in his divine law. They were sinless. We see it in, in families today that once the children get up to a certain age, there's no more that this parent can tell them because they, they can go ahead and make their own rules up. Now. I still tell my kids stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they, they may not like it sometimes, but they. Yeah. I still tell them stuff. Yeah, I I'm know saying, you do. Yeah, but I'm saying in 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 the um aspect of the respect of okay, them your rules. Right. I got my own rules now. Yeah. You know, and and that's what 
the kind of picture these angels. Okay, Yahweh, then was your rule. We make our own rules. We make our own. And we're going to establish our own way of life. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't establish it here. You got to go. I'm going to send you somewhere and yeah. see how you establish yeah. you it You say it when somebody yeah. comes into your house and they don't want to break the rules in your house. You got to go, man. You yeah. can't stay here. No, you got to. Not my house. No. <laughs> it ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I picked up Mark chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. And what I got out of this is, are you aware of what Yahweh determines what is forbidden? Mm -hmm. See, now you got to have an understanding. You can only filter right and wrong through an understanding. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have an understanding, then it's hard to determine what's right and wrong. Right. I had to, you know, tell somebody this the other day um, because they were going on a wrong premise. Verse 18, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear with understanding the word the divine expression of Messiah mm -hmm. and the cares of distractions of this world, the deceitfulness which deludes and deprives of riches of money and possessions and the desires as a longing for what is forbidden for other things entered in and choked by strangling the word, the divine expression of Messiah, and it becomes unfruitful and barren. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? When did it get there? When did it choke out what was planted there? When did the thief come in and steal the word out of your out of your heart? You know, we was talking the other day, and I say I was liking how people just so freely give up the word Yeshua for whatever it is they 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 um, try to replace him with. It's like you and I, we at home in the house, we sit in the chairs like we sit in now. And the thief is breaking in the house. We just push the chair back out of the way and let him come in and take what he want and leave. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind that's, would do that. That's what people are doing now. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're letting the word get choked right out of you because of what? For what? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, obviously nobody would, if they could, would not sit by idly and let that happen. But when it comes to the devil... Oh yeah, you come on in, bro. Steal my goods. Yeah, come on in. I'm like, I'm giving you permission to do it. Uh, he and Satan is saying, man, he easy, man. Yeah, he's easy. I'm gonna take the good stuff. Yeah, now. yeah I think I'm gonna hang better. out here for a while. He got a lot of stuff I can take. Uh, and when they take Yeshua from you, they took the greatest treasure. Oh yeah. Oh. yeah. Little does this sucker know what I'm getting ready to do to him. <laughs> That's the Mona Lisa they just stole. <laughs> All right, so I picked Psalm 119, one through six. And what I got out of this is, can you honestly say, I can look at this commandments and not feel guilty? Mm, mm, mm. Can you really? Let's read them. Blessed, how happy or are the undefiled with moral integrity without spot are in the way mm, mm. as the road of life. Who walk in the law of Torah of Yahweh. Blessed, how happy are those who keep who guard with protection his testimonies, who seek by diligently questioning him with the whole heart, the whole heart, mm -hmm. not part of it, mm -hmm. of feelings, your will, and intellect. That's all three, man. Mm -hmm. You can't just do one and leave the other two out mm -hmm. or do two and leave one out. you got to do it all three. Mm -hmm. Can you honestly say you're doing that or you're not? They also do uh, iniquity, perverse unrighteousness. They walk in his ways uh, as the road of life. You have commanded us to keep by putting a hedge of protection with thorns your precepts as a mandate diligently. Mm. That means you're actively involved in doing this. Oh, that my ways as the road of life were directed by putting a hedge of protection with thorns to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed with confusion and disappointment. Man, we just got done doing about the devil mindedness. Mm -hmm. Here you go. With confusion and disappointment. When I look with pleasure and care into all your commandments, mm -hmm. the divine law of Torah. Any oh, thoughts? Yeah. Th that's what it does. When, when sin reveals itself comes to life in anybody it brings disappointment it brings hurt it's a pain that some of these sins bring to just you physically and emotionally 
that you don't want nobody else to feel it. I've been down some sinful roads, <laughs> and it's some things that, oh, that's why I cry out so hard to people now to open up your eyes and just see, because I don't want you to feel that pain. Right. But how many goes in to get these disappointments and, and pains after they had so many warnings not to do so? But if you take these commandments and you really put them in there to treasure them in your heart, with your whole heart, as you just read, then they're going to prevent a lot of disappointments and pains from coming. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you you, you might have to uh, feel the pain of not having what you think is going to make you feel good momentarily, but it's only when you get it, that moment, that moment goes away of pleasure, then all this lasting pain and disappointment is there, and nothing can remove it but Yeshua. You know, you just said something. I just got another flash, and it's kind of something like, how can I express this? Let's look at Yahshua and his sacrifice. He can honestly say, that he went to the cross and suffered not because of anything that he did wrong, mm -hmm. but for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But when we suffer something, can we, we honestly to say the same thing? Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. See, when you suffer because of something that you did, you deserve what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be crying about it. Mm -hmm. You should take it like a man, mm -hmm. right? But when you suffer for not doing any wrong, it's a whole nother level. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a whole nother level of suffering. Different paradigm shift altogether. Maybe. And most people, just to finish, uh -huh. most people I meet complain when they suffer because of what they did. And they want to deny what they did. Yes. It's bad enough you're suffering for what you did, but now on top of that, you're going to deny that you're the cause of it? Mm. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I was I was talking to a a, a, a person, I ain't going to say their name, and it was a female, and we was talking, you know, and they said something really profound. It's like uh, when you're trying to raise your kids up now to avoid the the choices and the mistakes mm. you made, when you were in that uh, age range or whatever, and that you want to be that mother for them, that protecting mother, but they wouldn't listen. And, and, and they was telling me about having that first kid out of wedlock and how that, that person, they thought that person they was having the kid from, was they was going to be together for life and raise a family. But when they're pregnant now, that person tells them they don't want them no more. And they said that was a pain they can't even describe. How do you think Yeshua feels when you tell him you don't want him anymore? He or, married you. Or, you know? as most of the people I say, I want him, but I want him on my terms in this other way. Yes. Not in this way. Yes, if you still want to be with me, then you're going to have to accept me like this and let me do what I want. But that then ain't who, what you want. Then who's Messiah in that moment? Yes. Who's dictating the terms? Mm -hmm. These are subtle realities and games that we play in our heads that we really don't contemplate the outcome and the consequences, the unintended consequences yeah. of these things. It's painful. So this next section, America's punishment for breaking the commandments, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Um, the reason why I put this in here is for a few reasons, but... One of them is, is um, one day, several months back, um, I just happened to flip on the TV, and there's a woman that came on. She has her own show. I don't remember what TV station is. Um, Dana Lash, okay? Mm -hmm. She's a conservative talking person, you know, has her own show, uh, gun advocate, all that kind of stuff. And um, in the moment that I turned it on, I heard something that made me have to respect her more than all the other talking heads I see on TV. Mm -hmm. I said, this woman's got guts. And I respect this woman for what she said. Mm -hmm. Here's what she said. Um, it was, what was going on at the time? Because I'm trying to remember. 
the pandemic, the, the vaccine mandates, the mass mandates, you know, the schools, all these different things that were really oppressing everybody really bad and, and all this oppression, um, the economy going down, all these different things. And she, she stopped and she said, you know what? She said this. She said, I have kind I'm kind of paraphrasing, but, but it, this is more or less what she was saying. She said, I've come to the point of seeing all this destruction that's coming on the USA that I'm now at the point where I'm really ready to concede that what is happening to us, we deserve it. That our sins and transgressions probably have gotten so bad in this country that she said God, the creator, is punishing America and we're not seeing it. I'm like, holy moly. Now, I can respect this woman because I ain't never heard nobody from the top of these guys on TV to the bottom. I've never heard one of them make a statement like that. Oh, America's great. We're a great we're a great country. There's never been another country like this in the history of man. The great experience. Actually, give me a freaking break. Are you serious? Are you telling me that when Yahweh had King David on the throne, that that nation wasn't better than the United States? If it wasn't for that, this country would have never existed. That was the greatest experiment. Do we have a temple in this country where the Shekinah glory is pouring out the top of that temple? I don't think so. There ain't nothing greater than that one. So when these people all say that stuff, I get a little angry because they're trying to say America's great. America's not great. It has nothing to do when it was great. It had nothing to do with the people. You didn't earn it. This was an Abrahamic promise that Yahweh made to Abraham, that through your descendants, I will bless thee. Mm -hmm. It's a promise. Mm -hmm. When I bless somebody, it's not because of something that they did that they earned it. I'm giving it of my own free will to them because I promised to do it, mm -hmm. not contingent upon anything that you did to earn it. Mm -hmm. What do we not understand about that? So when these pundits get on there and say, America is the greatest country in the history of mankind, give me a freaking break. Are you serious? Have you really thought about it? There were many great things about this country. It wasn't about how the people did it. The people could only do it because Yahweh put the industrious nature into the Americans to be able to do this, but it was by promise. Yahweh had to do it by promise. It wasn't by works. It was by promise. I get a feeling you want to say something. No. Uh, no? you you I, like on the edge of I, your seat. I, what, what thought came to my mind is that. So you do got something you want to say. Yeah, I guess I'll say it. Okay. They considered Egypt to be a great country. Right. But it was a lot of wickedness in it. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. but it was a great country. Right. In, in the eyes of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. or in the eyes of the people that wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't oppress people. But when you see the oppressed people, ask them what kind of country Egypt was. Mm -hmm. Ask Israel what kind of country Germany was. Yeah, I'm sure they think that's a great country. Mm -hmm. uh, Poland and all of that. And, and right now you brought up um, what, the, the country that's going at war right now. Russia and... Oh, Russia uh, and uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. Russia supposed to be a great country, but ask Ukraine. <laughs> you know, great, but so with a different interpretation. It's, it's all who eyes yeah, are, are making that's true. That, that picture. Well, you know? that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. What is your filter? Mm -hmm. what, how These people are teaching people this stuff. And it's because you lose your way like that and you're adopting false teaching. And this, this isn't a secular idea mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. okay? But it's still the same idea. You're accepting what these people are telling you. Yeah, America's great and blah, blah, blah. I'm not anti-America. Don't get me wrong. I love this country. I love what it did for me. And I, I make sacrifices to, to bless this country as best as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not against America. I'm just mm -hmm. saying it's misplaced understanding about what made America great. It was a covenant agreement. It had to be done. And if it wasn't for that covenant agreement, America would have never existed to begin with. Okay? So that kind of leads me to where we're mm -hmm. going with mm -hmm. this. 
the lost sheep of the house of Israel. America is part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They don't know they're lost, but they're lost. But I just mm -hmm. illustrated how you do know you're lost because it's misplaced an understanding about who America is and why we became such a, a great nation, not the greatest. Mm -hmm. Israel in its heyday was the greatest nation. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. So I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 49, verses 1 through 2. It says, a prediction of America's future. Okay? And it says, and Jacob, which is Israel, and the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is the northern ten tribes, came out of Jacob. Okay? The healing catching supplanter called his sons, the builders of the family name, which is Yahweh, and said, gather together and I will tell as an announcement of prediction to you what shall befall in a hostile manner of you in the last as the end of your prosperity days. Mm -hmm. Bingo. There it is. In days. America. Can you see yourself as in the end days? Can you see that? Because if you can, this is talking about you. Mm. In part, it's also talking about the lost sheep of the house of Israel scattered in other nations as well. Mm. Gather together and hear. Shema. By listening with intelligence, you sons of Jacob, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and listen to Israel, your father. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to hear. We want to hear lies. We want, to heap, we want to heap up teachers that want to teach us a bunch of spiritual garbage mm -hmm. and junk food. But this is where we are now. We don't want to hear the truth. We don't, because what it does is, when you hear the truth, it compels you to have to change. And we don't want to change. We want to hang on to the America we knew of the past. Yahweh's looking to the future. But we don't want to adopt the future. We don't want to adopt the past. Mm -hmm. Yahweh's saying, forget about the past. I'm moving you to the future. He's telling you in the end days, this is the future. This is where it's going. And you're going to collapse. And you better get your house in order before it does. So I also picked Leviticus 26, 1 through 11. The promise of blessings being taken away from America. Again, on the concept that we are part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is Jacob, mm -hmm. the northern ten tribes, not the Jews, although Jews do live here. You shall not make idols that are good only for vanity for yourselves. And America has so many idols, it's not funny. Entertainment, and I can just go on and on and on. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what that is. For yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down and prostrate in homage to it, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. You know, I had said in a recent teaching, we have the Ten Commandments in our courts. We have them posted in our public buildings and other public places. We don't keep the Ten Commandments. What good is it to post it in the courts when they don't even rule by the Ten Commandments? Where's the justice? We've set up different false idol system in judgment. It does, it, there's no blindness in the law where everybody's equal. If you got money, you get out. Mm -hmm. You know? You get off the hook. And we're seeing that now with, uh, more and more. Verse 2, you shall keep by placing a hedge of thorns around my Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Plural. Not just the weekly Sabbath, but the seven annual Sabbaths. Intermissions of rest to desist from exertion, a day of celebration and reverence with fear, my sanctuary, a place that is consecrated, I am Yahweh. We are the consecrated place now. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath of statutes and judgments now live inside of us. Mm -hmm. We don't need a physical temple. We have become the temple where the living Elohim exists. Mm -hmm. If, as conditional, you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments, mitzvah, the divine Torah law, and perform by placing a hedge of thorns around them, then I will give you rain in its season, the land shall yield its fruit, the trees of the field shall uh, yield their fruit. Your threshing shall uh, last till the time of vintage, 
and the vintage shall last to the time of sowing. You shall eat the bread to full of satisfaction of joy and dwell in your land safely as a place of refuge from enemies. And what are we seeing? We got enemies that are pouring across the border, filling our land with drugs that are killing hundreds of thousands of people. People committing suicide because of this stuff. People's lives are being destroyed. Child trafficking. All these enemies have been infiltrated this country. We don't have this promise of divine protection anymore. We once had it, but not anymore. I will give peace, safety, and prosperity in the land. We don't have that. In the land, you shall lie down and no one will make you afraid. We got people fearful all over. We're fearful of our own government. Our own government is coming after us in different ways to shudder with terror. And I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go down into your land. You will chase by running after with hostile intent your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Look what's happening with, as you brought up about Putin in, in, in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We've wimped out. We wimped out. When we had the other guy in office, they wouldn't dare pull this trick because he said he would nuke Moscow. But now we're running from this guy, and now he's running in and he's taking over this country. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the strength anymore. We've lost it. Our divine power has been taken from us. Verse 9, For I will look on you favorably, and make you fruitful, multiply you, and confirm my covenant. How do you get confirmed confirmation of the covenant? That was a compact which was made by passing between two pieces of flesh with you. That happened the first time in Genesis 15 with mm -hmm. Abraham, where he passed between two pieces of flesh. That was the first Passover. Well, there may have been one in the garden, um, but that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. You shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. I will set my tabernacle as the dwelling place among you, and my soul shall not abhor as a vile thing to be cast away from you. America is in violation of all this because they reject the commandments, because they've heaped up teachers that have given them a different ideology, and they don't want to keep the commandments. They've heaped up idols for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this land is filled with idols of every sort. And Yahweh's not happy about this. Mm -hmm. And so calamity is coming on this country. Any thoughts? No, go ahead. No, okay. You're saving it for the end. Okay, I got you. Jeremiah 10, 25, America refusing to call on Yahweh's name. That's a biggie. Mm -hmm. People don't want to call on Yahweh's name. So in verse 25 says, pour out your fury as a hot displeasure on the Gentiles who do not know you and on the families who do not call, pronounce by name your name, Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Third commandment. Mm -hmm. Third commandment, not to take it in vain, make it come to nothing. Mm -hmm. The only way you could do that is refusing to pronounce his name. Yes. For they have eaten up Jacob devoured him and consumed him and made his dwelling places a desolation. We are Jacob. We are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We're part of that house. And we're being devoured by our enemies in many, many different ways. Any thoughts? Oh, oh you're going to have to have one on this because this is your scripture. No. <laughs> <laughs> Micah 311. Crafty marketing schemes that sway the under... This is when you're going to let loose. I can tell. I uh, yeah, you're gonna let loose on this one, because this is about this is about how the leaders in Christianity are profiting off the people and telling them all kinds of lies. <laughs> you run that on the phone on me all the time, so I know you got to do it here. Uh, verse 11: Her heads judge by litigation for a bribe mm -hmm. of a redemptive reward. Her priests teach to for pay as wages, and her prophets divine by determining fees through a divine scroll for money. Mm -hmm. Yet they lean by supporting themselves on Yahweh and say, is not Yahweh among us? No harm can come upon us. Mm -hmm. That's kind of dangerous. Here we go. To be in this, that condition yeah. where you know you're doing wrong, but 
you have uh, been deceived in your mind that you have this freedom or liberty to do the things that you know that are against Torah. And ask the question, can any harm come to me for doing it? Because punishment delayed don't mean that it's not coming. And so they tend to do all of these strange things inside these buildings, you know, and all people are paying. You're paying for people to speak to the dead. Right. You're paying for people to tell you your future and uh, to give you the lottery number. You're going to prophets, uh, ones that call them prophets, but Peter told us they're going to be false prophets. Mm -hmm. And so you go to them and, and you pay money to get what you want. Or you pay to get your way to the judges of the world, as you just said. I'm going to bribe the judge and I'm going to get my way. You know, I'm going to get this property over here. Just let me pay, and I can get the paper to say that this property belongs to me when you know you didn't get it right. And so we do things in life not considering that Yahweh is looking at all of these things. But we say that it's okay we do them. And you teach people. It's okay I'm doing to you what I'm doing to you. And, and they know what you're doing to them is not right. Now, if I'm, how can I help you by doing the wrong thing? You shouldn't take that bribe. It's about the money. Yeah. Which is what this is talking about. Yeah. If it's you, the money. If I go to the pastor and he tell me I can divorce my wife, I got his blessing, I know that's wrong if I really know what the word of right. Yahweh says. Right. You know? And, but... All I got to do is go to him and he'll give me the permission that I could do what I do, give him a little money, and then take the money to the court. Therein lies the problem. Because mm -hmm. in the beginning I had stated, are you a leader or a follower? If you're a follower, you need to pay that man to stand up there to tell you things that you want to hear. Exactly. If he's doing it for if hire. If you're a leader, you can tell him you can stick that where the sun don't shine and you're not getting a penny from me because I'm not promoting you anymore. You're a false teacher. You're a false prophet, as it says right here. And I'm not going to reward you for teaching false doctrine. Yeah, but, but this is the concept that they've gotten, John. And we talked about sheep being led to the slaughter mm -hmm. you know not one sheep picked his head out of line to see what's happening to the other one he right. just stood right in line and went behind it so there's no questioning uh okay the pastors is the heads of these churches but they're hired by the congregation to work for the congregation, but they're actually telling the congregation what to do and when to do it. And they have a legal right yeah, from the Satan to do that. You paying them to tell you what to do. Because that's what you want to hear. Because you won't read for yourself or study for right. yourself so, what to do. So what's wrong with instead of going to the leader of a congregation and asking him to tell you what you should be getting or what should happen to you, Versus why you're not going to Yahweh and ask him directly. Isn't this what Israel did? They told Moses, you talk to him. We don't want to hear him directly. And then you tell us what he says. Well, is that not what you're doing with the pastor? You worship a, a kind of Moses where you don't have the guts to go before Yahweh. Are you afraid to hear what Yahweh's really going to tell you about yourself? I believe that's what's really going on. You're afraid. And, and you don't want to hear it. And we're assuming that they've all heard from him together because Israel was together hearing the voice and seeing right. the works. Now we are coming in. We're as being the word is coming out to those of us now. It had to come out. We didn't see the works, but we hearing the story about the works. So do we believe the works? is another thing and then he shows you who he sent and who he did not send but if you don't have that relationship how you going to know if they know You're him not or going not to. so you got to get your relationship for yourself right you know but like i said when we judging things we're always comparing you know what looks the best and determines where we're going to go 
uh, there are many, we, we are talking Torah. It's more than just Torah. So I'm not um, denying whatever part they might have, prophecy or whatever they do, but you need more than prophecy. Faith, you need more than faith. But the Bible tells the greatest all is love. Where is your love? If you're destroying one another and using one another and lying to one another, where is the love in that? And so put it all together to be a complete body. Mm -hmm. But they're cutting off the Torah, the part that is love. It's they have cut that of off. Law yes. is love. They cutting that part off. So why don't you add this part in and don't reject this part? And we can, we can I'm not rejecting faith. Right. I'm not rejecting mercy mm -hmm. and none of the other things that they teach. You right. know, I, I actually <laughs> need that too. But don't tell me you don't need this part because you do need that part. If not, then I know you're incomplete. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for the enemy to come in and replace that with something mm -hmm. else. But he's going to have more. You j he just ain't going to put one thing there. Mm -hmm. He's going to put a bunch of stuff. So right. you, it's a bunch of things you got in you now that you got to uh, get removed. Because your house was clean, mm -hmm. but you don't let a stronger person in there now mm -hmm. than what by releasing your guard. You know, that one was holding guard over your life. The Torah say as a guard, you know, a hedge. Mm -hmm. You just tore your hedge down mm -hmm. to allow mm -hmm. the enemy in. Right. And so it, it don't surprise me when somebody denies you sure. No. When you knew him before, it's no surprise because you mm -hmm. gave the hedge up. Mm -hmm. Now you thinking something, you you want people to believe that you still got the hedge on. I know you don't have the hedge because you have rejected your sure. Mm -hmm. You don't have it. You could be the nicest person in the world. You could have the most money in the world. But when you don't have the commandments, you don't have your sure. You don't have your sure. Uh, uh, just want to speak to the, the people, the friends out there. Mm -hmm. As tough as we might get, Please don't misconstrue where we're coming from. It's not spoken in condemnation. Mm -hmm. It's about a condition. Only you can measure where you're actually at in this situation. If it's rubbing you wrong, it's because you're being provoked mm -hmm. into doing something about your condition and you just ain't ready to do it yet. Exactly. Okay, I get that. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to condemn you. Your time will come and you'll have to deal with it then. You might have some penalties and interest that come along because you're procrastinating what you know you should do and you're not doing it. But this is not meant as condemnation. Everybody's in a different place. We're just trying to talk about a condition here, how you get there, and what the remedy is for getting out of it. Mm -hmm. So I picked Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 through 11. And what I got out of this is reinstating those who have been intoxicated by irresponsible shepherd. Reinstating those who have been intoxicated by the irresponsible shepherds. That is, we're mostly talking about in the Christian church who are feeding false doctrine. In verse 1 it says, And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds. And we're kind of doing that, mm -hmm. what we're doing here. Because mm -hmm. we're exposing and calling out what's being done. That rule over Israel, or the lost sheep of the house of Israel, um, prophesy and say to them, Thus says... Yahweh Elohim to the shepherds. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed graze for themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat, the richest part of the meat, and clothe yourselves with wool, which is shaggy. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. They feed them a bunch of bull crap is what they feed them. Mm -hmm. The weak, afflicted, and worn down you have not strengthened by repairing. Nor have you healed those who were sick or bound up like a tightly wound turban of the broken in heart, nor brought back what was driven away by misleading, nor sought through prayer and any other means possible that was the lost who wandered away on their own, but the for with force and cruelty to break apart with severity. You have ruled, tread down them. So they were scattered because they were no shepherds and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered and misled through intoxication through all the mountains and the very high hills. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth and no one was seeking to search for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear 
to hear with intelligence and obey the word of Yahweh. As I live, says Yahweh Elohim, surely my, because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, nor did the shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear, to hear with intelligence and obey the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, behold, you better hear, you better hear. I am against the shepherds, and I will require by making an inquisition of my flock at their hands. I will cause them to cease as a Sabbath rest from feeding the sheep. There's coming a point where the people mm -hmm. are going to be taken away. As a matter of fact, they're saying that churches are closing down in record numbers in America. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Oop, there it is. Mm -hmm. It's right there. And the shepherds shall feed themselves no more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. For thus says Yahweh Elohim, I indeed, I myself will search by making an inquisition for my sheep and seek them out. Any thoughts? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Third point, the remedy. Mm -hmm. The remedy. So I pick 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Making sure you're not classified as reprehensible mm -hmm. is what I get out of this verse. Mm -hmm. Making sure you're not classified as reprehensible. Be diligent with earnest and laborious study to present, to stand as an exhibit of yourself, approved by being tried to Elohim, a worker who can teach. Mm -hmm. See, this is what it said from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Are you a leader or are you a follower? Mm -hmm. You should be a leader, but teaching in the right doctrine. Mm -hmm. Not bad doctrine. Who does not need to be ashamed of being called reprehensible. Rightly dividing that can take make a straight cut through the divine word of truth of the divine expression of Messiah. Baruch Hashem. Something you want to say? Yeah, and it, the teaching don't mean we have to necessarily be up on a platform or not, but your right. very life, your right. very walk mm -hmm. can be a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, and that you don't be ashamed of this way. That's what hurts people. They are ashamed of the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. They are ashamed of living right, <laughs> you know, but when they get caught living wrong, there's no shame to them. And... and mm -hmm. Paul is telling Timothy, don't be ashamed of doing the right thing and living the right thing and exhorting in the right manner, you know, and, and being able to rightly discern what is right and what is wrong mm -hmm. and do it and don't be ashamed of doing it. Right, right. Okay, so I picked Matthew 22, 35 through 40, mm -hmm. and I got out of this, getting your obedience in the right order, first things first. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. John talked about returning to the first love. Mm -hmm. That's getting it in the right order. Mm -hmm. You know, after that, yeah. nothing else really matters. Then one of them, a lawyer in verse 35, an expert in Mosaic law, asked him a question testing as an act of enticement of him. So mm -hmm. he's trying to lure him in. Mm -hmm. Okay, he thinks he's smarter than him. Right. Teacher, which is the great commandment as an authoritative prescription in the law of Moses? You know, I don't think we really, when we look at this phrase authoritative prescription when you go to your doctor and you got a terminal illness mm -hmm. and he says to you if you want to live and beat this thing you got to take this medicine mm -hmm. that's an authoritative prescription mm -hmm. do we understand the weight of this mm -hmm. i don't think we really do but that's what it means in the greek mm -hmm. the great commandment an authoritative prescription mm -hmm. in other words if you want to live you better take this thing right okay in the law of moses Yahshua said to him, You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, feelings, and with all your soul, breath, and with all your mind of understanding. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment mm -hmm. of most important order of importance and great commandment as the authoritative prescription. And the second, afterward, in order is like it. Mm -hmm. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So in the same way you love Yahweh, mm -hmm. 
by not making idols, not bowing down, worship them, calling on his name and keeping the Sabbath day in the same way you devote to him. That way you should be doing the same thing to your fellow man. Yes. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But you got to get the first one first. Mm -hmm. Don't do the second one first and say, I don't need the first one because mm -hmm. that's what everybody does. Mm -hmm. It's the first and great commandment for a reason. It's the first four. Mm -hmm. Get it and write it in its right order. Okay, verse uh, 40. On these two commandments, as an authoritative prescription, hang all the law, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of Moses, mm -hmm. and the Gospels as a prescription, mm -hmm. and the prophets who were our inspired po uh, pro uh, poetic foretellers. So what I did is I took this shadow picture of what he's explaining here, and I made a graphic, mm -hmm. the Shema. Based on Matthew 22, 37 through 39, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. So the first and great commandment is no Elohims, no idols, do not take my name in vain and remember the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the first and great commandment. That's why it's at the top. Mm -hmm. It's not at the bottom mm -hmm. where you don't find it. Get that one first. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then the second one, Honor your father and mother, no murder, no adultery, no stealing, bear no false witness, and do not covet. Mm -hmm. That comes after. Mm -hmm. It's not as great as. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was going to get into something else, but I, I don't think I will. We're short on time. <laughs> so underneath that hangs the Torah and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the rest of Torah comes and then the prophets underneath that. But these two are the ones you need to focus on first. Mm -hmm. Get them right and get them in the right order. Mm -hmm. So you pick James 1, 23 to 25, and I got out of this, can we be blessed by rejecting the perfect law of liberty? And I say no. So let's read. 22, but be doers as a performing poet of the word, which is the Torah, and not hearers only, deceiving and deluding yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, as a performing poet, he is like a faint copy of a man observing himself, his natural face in a mirror mm -hmm. that is a, uh, from a piece of glass. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately, directly, and at once forgets and loses out of mind and neglects what kind of man he just saw he was. Mm -mm. But he who looks as to bend beside and lean over so as to peer into the perfect, complete moral character of the law of Moses, which is of liberty, that is freedom of moral conduct, and continues and stays near by preserving themselves in it and is not a for forgetful through negligence hearer, but a doer as mm -hmm. a performing poet of the work that is an active effort. This one will be blessed in what he does. Mm -hmm. Praise him. I'll just make a little uh, comment. I know we're short and this, this could be like whatever closing. I no, would say we still got a little more to go. So go uh, ahead and spit it out. It don't matter. Um, I, when I was reading that one there, it, it, it kind of took me back to when um, Moses went up into the mount. And he stayed for the 40 days and 40 nights. And the people say, where is it? He's gone. So mm -hmm. now he ain't coming back. They want to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua gave an analogy to that when the, um, they said, the master of the house is going on a, a long journey and he ain't gonna return it. So they rose up to play and when he came back, he found them without oil in their lamps, you know? And I would like to ask people, where are you gonna be found when he, when he returns, you know? You say you this person, but you're not doing what this person asks you to do. You heard him tell you because you, you let me know you heard. But why are you not doing what he asks you to do? Why is he finding you, finding everybody doing all these different things, man? So the first and greatest and the second, you got to be doing both of them. If mm -hmm. you're doing both of them, you will not be caught doing something else mm -hmm. different. Nope. That is the foundation. Mm -hmm. 
If you work from there, everything works to your benefit. So I picked Matthew 9, 17. Do you have the prescription for entering into eternal life? Mm -hmm. Here's the prescription, okay? So he said to them, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is Elohim. Mm -hmm. But if you want to enter by passing through into life, mm -hmm. keep your eye focused to guard from loss or injury like a military fortress, the, the commandments. commandments. Mm -hmm. Which is your authoritative prescription. Mm -hmm. My goodness. It's like Yahshua said, if you can't hear Moses' words, how are you going to hear my words? Mm -hmm. We don't believe Yahshua's words anymore. Mm -hmm. He's telling us right here, and we don't want to believe it. I picked Mark 12, 29. Can you hear the order of importance? Yahshua answered him, an order of importance of all the commandments is here mm -hmm. to give an audience to O Israel Yahweh your Elohim Yahweh is one mm -hmm. he and the son speak the same thing mm -hmm. they don't speak different things mm -hmm. Psalm 110 10 I'm um, 111 10 if the first fruit is not there then you do not have true fear is what I got out of this mm -hmm. the fear of moral reverence of Yahweh is the beginning mm -hmm. of the first fruit of wisdom which is skillful wit a good understanding with discretionary intelligence have all those who do by advancing his commandments his praise endures forever man that's a lot in that mm -hmm. the first fruit of wisdom is more reverence for Yahweh's commandments mm -hmm. so if you don't reverence his commandments you don't have wisdom you don't even have the first fruit, which gives the first blossom to create a tree where it grows. Mm -hmm. You don't have it. Mm -hmm. Those are some tough words. Yes. But that's what it says. I also picked uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The duty of everyone who came from Adam. Mm -hmm. This is a summation of everything. Mm -hmm. Let us hear with attentive obedience the conclusion. In other words, with all the arguments said, here's the bottom line. This is what it's saying. That terminates all discussions of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Okay? Ain't nobody can talk any other trash. This one supersedes everybody's argument. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And cause of the discussion. Fear with more reverence of Yahweh and keep with a hedge about with thorns his commandments. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. divine law of Torah... For this is the whole duty to complete and perfect it by mankind who come from Adam. Not the Jew. Mm -hmm. The Jews included. Mm -hmm. The commandments aren't for just the Jew. Mm -hmm. This is all mankind and it's designed to bring perfection. Mm -hmm. Of course, through Yahshua as he tells you to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. So now we're in the closing comments. Yeah, praise him. And there's one side note in there. He don't say here, O Judah. He say here, O Israel. O Israel. <laughs> All Israel. 12 tribes. Yes, Shema Israel. Thank him for that. That his word is, is sure. Mm -hmm. And for me, these, these, this subject, it's like you really got to pay attention. It's like I, I, one of the first discussion we did, who is your teacher? You know, once you determine who it is, then you determine what manner of person you are, what doctrine you really, really gravitate to. Do you want bad doctrine or do you want good doctrine? All the terms on the teachers you, you um, select into your life. If you're sure it's not that head teacher or the main teacher, then you surely not going to find his teachers. No. You're going to find the teachers that you are looking for. And it won't be the ones that were sent by Yahweh. And just all these different uh, scriptures that we read today, all of them are basically crying out to the same way. Just examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. I mean, everybody can claim they're in the faith, but examine yourself by reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures and praying, and you'll find you there. You could talk a good talk. 
you could say what you say, but it's, we're not arguing about it. Just as I have to do every day, examine myself, you know, and don't be found to shame when he, he um, returns, that I'll be disappointed, right. that he say, I never knew you depart mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be there. So I'm just pleading that everybody that hears the word just examine yourself as I am doing daily you know that we all cause the times are getting hard and we all we all gotta have the same vision mm -hmm. and that's that's the kingdom of Yeshua Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Uh, I just want to say this America heart to heart at some point you have got to stop and and ask yourself some very serious questions. You have been taught lies through religious organizations, through politicians, and they're going to continue to lie to you. The bottom line is, the more you listen, the more the country goes down. Stop looking to these false leaders. I'm not saying disrespect them. Just simply saying, don't put credence in what they're telling you. The whole point of why America's going down is twofold. Number one, Abrahamic blessing is being removed. And Yahweh states in many different prophecies that once he removes it, the country collapses. Okay? It's the immorality of the people in this country that's causing the country to go down. It's not really your leaders. They're just supporting the movement in that direction. It's time for you to break away. It's time for you to get right with Yahshua and with the Father Yahweh and sit down and really examine, Am I getting? is the country getting better or getting worse? I don't think anybody can argue, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, that the country is getting worse. And so... You have to get right with Yahweh. And if you don't get right with Yahweh, then it's on your head. The blood is on your hands. This is a time now to wake up, and we know that there are a certain amount of people that are going to wake up, because Yahweh says in the end times, set up banners, set up road signs for my people Israel that they may come back so that they can find a way back. We're setting up banners. We're setting up road signs trying to show you the way back. But only you can decide whether you want to come back. You are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And although this country may come to its end, as well as all other governments may come to their end, because Yahshua is going to have to put an end to them, at the end of the day, this is about your own personal preservation. Only you can decide what's going to happen with your destiny. Only you can decide what you're going to do or not do. Don't, don't allow these things to happen to you. Please, I plead with you, please repent. Come back to the two great commandments as your starting point so that at least you can get right with Yahweh so that when these things do happen, you can stand before the Son of Man and, and, and he can say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into my joy. And with that, we thank you for joining with us today. We ask Yahweh to bless your hearing and your understanding. Until the next time, shalom.